All right, up at Mount Glorious with the great and mighty Greg Pearson. Came all the way up from Byron Bay, had the crazy idea that he's gonna drive up at 3.30 in the morning, but he decided to have some sense and stayed the night in Bris Vegas last night. Just did 30 Ks around Mount Glorious. This is part of the BTU 100 miler that both Greg and I are doing. Greg, what do you think of the course going out there? Uh, it's gonna be pretty epic on the, on the climbing side of things. Um, yeah, lots of rolling terrain, some big, uh, yeah, steep climbs in parts, but yeah, looking, looking forward to the, the challenge. Yeah, it's a crazy course. I'm trying to get out here and recce run it as much as possible. I don't have as much experience in my legs as uh, other guys do, but I often think that the guys that don't come into the race and they're seeing it for the first time, if you don't have that vert experience, it's like, man, this is just a lot of up and then a lot of down and not much of just flat running. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it's certainly good to get out and get some, get some records in, get some experience on the course, get yourself familiar with what's, what you're coming up against and then you know what's around the corner. Although a lot of the terrain around here looks very similar, so that's pretty tricky, but you know, you get a sense of what you're, what you're in for. Let's crank, in, let's crank into some questions here. We work with lots of runners between both of us and we both get pumped with lots and lots of questions. So let's riddle off a couple of very, very common questions. You tackle it from the training side, I'll tackle it from the nutrition side. Cameraman Bill's gonna fire the questions at us. Uh, so from my side of things, pl plenty to choose from. Uh, top three, going too hard too often, number one. Uh, lots of fast running, not enough easy running, uh, not, no real purpose to the, to the workouts uh, and not having the structure in place to go, right, okay, um, one, one day a week I need to go a little bit harder, the majority of the time needs to be nice and easy, um, but spending, just spending every session going way too hard, way too fast and then that impacting burnout, fatigue, injuries, etc. Do you find um like when guys come, like they just have no idea how to structure like running, like they just go out and just run. Is that the thing you see often? It's just like, okay, I'll just go and just run and every run is the same. And then you're like, I've got to add structure in here. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and off the back of that as well, people might be doing too much as well. So they might be running five times a week instead of just getting some good quality work out of three sessions a week. Uh, and then that, again, just leading to that uh, burnout and, and injury. And yeah, doing 5Ks, 10Ks, focusing a bit more on distance as opposed to time on feet across the week. Yeah, from a nutrition standpoint, I definitely find with the new guys we bring in, any endurance sports really, it's just, I'd say it's the lack of appreciation of what nutrition does in these events. And I think when you're doing, maybe starting out, there's so much and it might just go to the wayside, like I'm working on my technique, I need to figure out how to actually run and how to do this. But especially when you get into the longer races, if you're doing a half marathon, a marathon, and especially if you're doing the ultra marathons, nutrition is the biggest determinant if you get through that race or not. And I think that's what we do with a lot of runners, give that education, because it's the biggest mistake. They just go out, so many guys will go out and run 21Ks, 41Ks, even their five, 10K runs, they'll do it faster. They won't start a, like start establishing those good behaviors where you've got to train your gut and eat, and that's by far. They just don't appreciate the role and the importance that nutrition plays to get you through these longer races. 100%, and that's one of the, the biggest uh, focuses for, for us, well, for, for me with my athletes is that, during races, people are kind of oblivious to the fact that they need to actually fuel for those long, well, yeah, for the longer distances, but also practice that in training to get to the point where you're familiar with what your body wants as opposed to what my body wants and what, what I can deal with. Um, and then obviously as you progress to those bigger distances, it's really getting to grips with what you can handle and yeah, obviously going to the professionals to, to get that kind of advice is really important. Cool. So, I mean, from my perspective, again, there's many angles you could go down here. I mean, starting, starting small, starting on a, a baseline. Assuming if you wanted to do an ultra, you're coming in from an angle of, well, I've done a half marathon, marathon. I mean, if you can do a marathon, you can do a, you know, you, you can go a, a, an extra few hundred meters on top of that. So you, you, you can get into that ultra range. Start at the 50K mark, build your way up to the, the bigger distances, 100Ks plus 100 milers. Um, yeah, I don't think you need to necessarily dive straight in. Although in saying that, I do think there's something to be said for, if you want to just do an ultra, go and book it. If you want to do a 100K and you don't want to do a 50K, go and do a 100K. Like, I don't see it. As long as you're, you're preparing your body properly for it, like why not? Yeah, 
from a nutrition standpoint, I think just have a plan and start practicing that plan early. The biggest thing I see with guys when they first get into ultra marathons is, yeah, they've done all the training, they've put the time and effort in, but then because you will very rarely or never really run the distance of the race in your training, you really shouldn't, should you? Because it's just not practical. So you don't know what your body is going to be like, especially from a nutrition standpoint. Can I take on that fuel from 70Ks onwards to the last 30Ks? So what we say to all our guys is you just need to be very, very diligent in training your gut and practicing all of these things. So when it comes game day, you don't even have to think about it. I know every 30 minutes I've got to put this gel in. Okay, the next 30 minutes I've got to put this Vegemite sandwich in. Oh, okay, I'm not really feeling that. I've got two other options and that's what you're just gonna constantly rotate. Oh, I don't like any of that now. I'm at 70Ks, I know I got a fuel. I'm gonna grab some Coke and some M&Ms or I'm gonna grab some watermelon or fruit or something, have those options, but then practice that really, really stringently throughout your training. So start small and just start training your gut and get to the point where you can build up to, okay, I'm okay with eating for one and then I've got different options throughout that race. Yeah, 100%. And that's also being diligent with your, your own research as well. Right? If you're going into that, a void of uncertainty of well I've never done over 42 Ks uh, I'm going for a 50 K 100 K then there's a lot of uncertainty beyond the marathon distance right so you've got to be accepting that well I'm, I'm not beyond a certain point in training I'm not going to really know how I'm going to feel at 70 Ks of 100 K because I've never done it before and you're not necessarily going to do it in training because as you say it's it's impractical um, so it's been kind of comfortable in that situation but being willing to do your own research as well and asking for help, asking for help from a coach or downloading a program, watching YouTube, whatever that might be, just get, get a good understanding of what you're in for, prepare properly and, you know, obviously it's going to be hard work, so expect, set that expectation, but yeah, that's um, kind of my point of view. Cool. So, I mean, pretty straightforward in a sense that get yourself a pair of comfortable shoes in, in my opinion. Like you don't have to go out spending a fortune on shoes that are potentially not going to feel fantastic for you. Like carbon plated shoes, etc. Just initially, if you're just starting out, get a comfortable pair of shoes that you know you're going to enjoy wearing rather than thinking too much about um, you know, how responsive this shoe is for speed work or for easy runs or for long runs. Just keep it super simple. Shoes, get yourself a comfortable pair. Socks, shorts, t-shirt. You don't need too, too much in, in the beginning. Get yourself, I'd always advise potentially getting yourself a, a watch if, you can, if you've got capacity to do that, because it's gonna give you the data that you need for, to make that progress. In saying that, if you're a true beginner, new runner, you just wanna get moving more and get comfortable with moving, moving more, making those progressions and, see, and seeing that, right, well, I've run two Ks, I can run three, I've just done five and, and kind of steadily building up. You don't have to rush into buying all this gear, just buy a little bit what you need and then you just build on it over time. Yeah, from a nutrition point, uh, just because I'm a, stickler, I'm a stickler for fueling your sessions no matter what, even if it's a 5K, 10K, shorter session, like in, shorter for in our world type thing, always fuel those sessions. I tell our guys, you don't have to go buy an expensive vest by any means because they are expensive and it's not doable for a lot of people, but at least go get a belt. You can get really cheap belts online for 10, 15 bucks from Amazon just so you can carry, say, a gel. And then even if you can get a handheld water bottle or a belt that can have a water bottle, just so you can keep drinking. Or if you've got a track or a route that can get you some fluid on the way and just get in the habit, a good habit of, you know, I'm going out for a run, let's fuel up here, let's make sure I'm getting some hydration in and I've got a gel or some lollies or a sandwich or something just to make sure you're constantly getting in the good habit of fueling. So I said to our guys, like if, if we're looking at gear from a nutrition standpoint, maybe a handheld water bottle if you don't have access to taps and then just a, it doesn't have to be an expensive one, just a cheap belt that you can keep some fuel, whether it's a gel or some lollies or whatever in there so you can keep fueling. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And that's going to, again, you're going to build on that over the course of, well, if you're just starting out and you're trying to achieve your first 5Ks, maybe you don't need all that necessarily but for the next for the 10k maybe you do need a little bit of that so start incorporating that in and then you build again you need a bit more equipment build again more and you just kind of yeah as you progress with your running you'll you know bring more equipment in yeah you'll spend a lot of money that's for sure <laughs> don't do it <laughs> 
Um, okay. I mean, there could be could be many things here, but one of the things is just do it for you. You don't need to you don't need to worry about anybody else. Don't worry about what anybody else is training for. Obviously, it's great that you know your mates doing this, your mates doing that, achieving various goals. But ultimately, just focus on doing it for yourself because you'll get much more out of it. You'll get much more fulfilment. Uh, out of completing the training that you do, the process that you're in for training for whatever race you've got coming up. Um, because it was, can be really easy to get caught up in thinking, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. Why am I not as fast as that person, that person? It's so that comparison is the thief of, of joy. It's just, it, it takes so much away from what you're actually doing in that process you're in, because you're always constantly worried that you're not doing enough or to, to compete with everybody else when you know, just do it, do it for yourself and see that progress over years to come and you'll be much more fulfilled in, in the journey that, that you're on and the, you know, completing those events. Yeah, I guess from a nutrition standpoint, I take the same, same viewpoint. It's um, you're on your own journey with it and everyone you see is on their own journey. I think it, when you're starting out, it's very easy when you're going out, if you're running in a busy area to look at everyone else and going, oh man, he's going so much faster than me. But yeah, because he's probably doing a tempo session and you're doing a low, easy, slow session and you always compare. I think from a nutrition standpoint, we tell a lot of our guys, do what you have to do to be the best you when you're running. And for some people, they may only need to take one gel out and a little bit of water and they'll be fine for 20Ks or whatever. That's just them, they're very conditioned, they're good at it, whatever. Some people may need to take a full you know, vest out, double up on their flask and they need that. They're a big sweater, they need to replace it and that's what they need to do to recover properly and get through that session. So do it for you. I actually signed Loz, our other dietitian, up to a marathon to keep her busy last year and we and her had this conversation. She said, should I wear my running vest when I'm doing this marathon, no one's running in a running vest. And I was like, well, why do you want to do that? She goes, well, it's so easy for me to hit my fueling numbers and to get my fluid in, to get my gels, it's all there and I don't want to have to worry about stopping at the aid session. It's like, well, then do that, do that. You don't have to worry about what everyone else is doing. And then she went out and crushed and she got an insane result for her age group. And it's like, well, it doesn't matter what they're doing, do what's best for you. Yeah, and be confident with what you, what you feel is best for you like don't yeah don't worry about that person like if you feel good use it because if you don't use it you know are you gonna bonk or are you gonna you know lack the confidence to push in that final 5k because you haven't had enough fuel or you don't feel comfortable without it on yeah you've got to yeah use what you feel is is best and, and do what's best for you Mindset, mindset is the biggest part of it, by far. A lot of people, I think, um, just need that need to develop that self belief and the confidence in in their ability to do it. Because I don't care whether you're a brand new to running and maybe you've never run a few k's before, more than a few k's, five k's, whatever it is. If you want to run a hundred k ultra, you can do it. You just got to have that belief in yourself to to get yourself through that training process and, and to race day and over the finish line. Because during training, we spoke about it today, the, the training is the hardest part of the whole process. If you're training for four, five, six months and you've got kids at home, you've got work to do, you've got a business, like to get to that start line of a 100K, 100 miler is crazy. So the race itself is a very small portion of what you're actually doing. Yes, okay, again, during that 100 miles, you're gonna have the, the mental aspect of battling through various ebbs and flows of how you're feeling uh, physically, mentally, but you can do it. You just gotta set those incremental sort of steps to, to get in there, not feeling like, you know, you, week one, week two of training, oh, this is, this is pretty tough, I'm doing three, four runs a week. Yeah, but, you know, you're gonna get stronger. That's what the training process is for, to get you to the point where you can run 100 miles. Um, still gonna be tough, but you, you've, um, yeah, you've got to put in the time to, and the repetition of training, training, training to, to get to that point. So I guess that would essentially mean that one of the biggest things I've learned is that you, you, can, do any, you can do anything. It's just a case of setting your, your focus on it and getting, getting to work. I think from a nutrition standpoint, I agree 100%. I think anyone that does ultra endurance is the first thing you realize is, oh my God, like my body will do whatever my mind tells it to do. And what the real learning is, how do I control my mind and get my mind to tell my body to do more? And I think um, what I say to a lot of our 
clients though, and I think a lot of this new wave of people getting into ultra endurance, they come in very motivated. And I say to them like, it's fine to be very motivated, but at some point when you get in these races, like there is a legit physical deterioration and you need to fuel that mental push. And I say, and you know, we spoke about it. I've, I've been on the receiving end where I didn't fuel it properly. And I think the biggest thing for me from a nutrition standpoint is like, yes, you need to fuel that mental push in a way that you need to be well hydrated and you need to be well fueled. And you do that from when the race starts because you know you're gonna face these mental battles yeah. and they're hard enough as it is. Don't make them any harder for yourself by being depleted and being dehydrated. So stay on top of it. So when you come face to face with whatever is that thing you're trying to find in this ultra marathon, and then you want to quit and you're that close to it, you can use all your mental energy towards that. You don't have to worry, hey, you know what, I'm completely depleted as yeah, well, I'm yeah. dehydrated. I can just focus on getting through this, this down and let's get back up here. And I say that to guys like, get on top of your hydration, get on top of your fueling. Yes, there's a physical aspect, but when it comes time to really dig deep, you know that you fueled that that battle you're gonna to have yeah. to have with yourself. Yeah, yeah, and I think on top of that as well, not from a, uh, a nutrition, so I think personally myself, but in terms of that uh, mentality in those situations, being kind of flexible in your approach, experience with races myself, being flexible in the sense of not necessarily always trying to be optimal with your nutrition necessarily, but using it to give you a bit of a pick me up to like, all right, well, I'll have some lollies or I'll have, as I was saying earlier, I just wanted some soup or I just wanted some Coke or whatever it is. And using that to give you a little bit of a boost when you, know, you, you need it most. Ah, well, great. Thanks for that session. I've been doing these uh, training. This is my second block. So I've been out here running around getting eaten by leeches alive by myself. So I appreciate you coming out. No doubt we'll get plenty more, but if you guys have any specific questions, make sure you reach out to Greg. Greg, let them know where to find you on your socials. Greg is one of the best coaches going around. So listen up when he talks. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, Greg C. Pearson. Uh, yeah, you find all my information on there and uh, just giving out content to hopefully help you crush your, your running goals um, in whatever capacity that, that may be for you.